California, CDL, DMV, Driver Handbook, Audio Edition. The best way to learn is to listen. Section 4. Section 4. In this section, we'll talk about vehicle inspection, loading and trip starting, on the road, after trip vehicle inspection, prohibited practices, use of brake door interlocks. Let us begin. Passenger vehicle drivers must have a CDL with a passenger endorsement if they drive a vehicle designed to transport more than 10 persons, including the driver. A passenger transport vehicle includes, but is not limited to, a bus, farm labor vehicle, or a general public paratransit vehicle when the vehicle is designed, used, or maintained to carry more than 10 passengers, including the driver, for hire or for profit, or by any nonprofit organization or group. If you take a driving test in a van designed, used, or maintained to carry 15 persons or less, including the driver, you will be restricted to driving a 15-passenger or less small size bus. To get the endorsement, you must pass the knowledge test in sections 2 and 4 of this video playlist. If your bus has air brakes, you must pass the knowledge test on section 5. You must also pass the skills test required for the class of vehicle you drive. A CLP holder with a passenger and or school bus endorsement is prohibited from operating a commercial motor vehicle with passengers other than federal, state, auditors and inspectors, test examiners, other trainees, and the accompanying of a CDL holder. Vehicle Inspection Vehicle Inspection Before driving your bus, you must be sure it is safe. You must review the inspection report made by the previous driver. Only if defects reported earlier have been certified as repaired, or repairs not needed should you sign the previous driver's report. This is your certification that the defects reported earlier have been fixed. See Section 11 for inspection information and guidelines. Memory aids are shown at the end of this video, of video in Section 11. You may only use one of these when you take your CDL. Vehicle inspection test for your CDL at DMV. The memory aid cannot include instructions on how to perform the vehicle inspection test. Refer to Section 5 for air brake information. Vehicle Systems Vehicle Systems Make sure these things are in good working order before you drive. Make sure the service brakes, including air hose couplings, are in good condition. Make sure the parking brakes, steering mechanism, lights and reflectors, the tires, the horn, the windshield wipers, the rear vision mirrors, coupling devices, wheels and rims, emergency equipment. Make sure they're all in good working order. Access doors and panels. As you check the outside of the bus, close any open emergency exits. Also, close any open access panels, like for baggage, restroom service, engine, etc., before you drive. The bus interior. Bus interior. People sometimes damage unattended buses. Always check the interior of the bus before driving to ensure rider safety. Aisles and stairways should always be clear. The following parts of your bus must be in safe working condition. Each hand hold and railing, the floor covering, signal devices including the restroom emergency buzzer if the bus has a restroom, emergency exit handles. The seat must be safe for riders. All seats must be securely fastened to the bus. Check the emergency exits for ease of operation, correct markings, and ensure that the required buzzers or devices work properly. Never drive with an open emergency door or window. The emergency exit sign on the emergency door must be clearly visible. If there is a red emergency door light, it must work. Turn it on at night or any other time you use your outside lights. In the passenger compartment of a farm labor vehicle, all cutting tools or tools with sharp edges must be placed in a covered container. All other tools, equipment, or materials carried in the passenger compartment shall be secured to the body of the vehicle. The driver and all passengers must wear seat belts. Roof Hatches You must lock some emergency roof hatches in a partly open position for fresh air. Do not leave them open as a regular practice. Keep in mind the bus's higher clearance while driving with them open. Make sure the bus has a fire extinguisher and emergency reflectors required by law. The bus must also have spare electrical fuses unless equipped with circuit breakers. Use your seat belt. The driver's seat should have a seat belt. Always use it for safety. Loading and trip start. Loading and trip start. Do not allow riders to leave carry-on baggage in a doorway or aisle. 
There should be nothing in the aisle that might trip other riders. Secure baggage and freight in ways that avoid damage, and allow the driver to move freely and easily. Allows riders to exit by any window or door in an emergency. Protect riders from injury if carry-ons fall or shift while driving. Hazardous Materials Hazardous materials. Watch for cargo or baggage containing hazardous materials. Most hazardous materials cannot be carried on a bus. The Federal Hazardous Materials Table shows which materials are hazardous. They pose a risk to health, safety, and proper property during transportation. The rules required by the shipper to make containers of hazardous materials with the materials name, ID number, and hazard label. There are nine different four-inch diamond-shaped hazard labels. See figure 4.1. Watch for the diamond-shaped labels. Do not transport any hazardous materials unless you are sure the rules allow it. Here's an illustration of figure 4.1 and the hazardous materials. Forbidden hazardous materials. Buses may carry small arms ammunition labeled ORM slash D, emergency hospital supplies and drugs. You can carry small amounts of some other hazardous materials if the shipper cannot send them any other way. Buses must never carry Division 2.3 poisonous gas, liquid class 6 poisons, tear gas, or irritating material. More than 100 pounds of solid class C poisons. They cannot carry explosives in the space occupied by people except small arms ammunition. They cannot carry labeled radioactive materials in the space occupied by people. They cannot carry more than 500 pounds total of allowed hazardous materials and no more than 100 pounds of any one class. Riders sometimes board a bus with an unlabeled hazardous material. Do not allow riders to carry on common hazardous hazards such as car batteries or gasoline. Oxygen medically prescribed for in the possession of a passenger and in a container designed for personal use is allowed. Wheelchairs transported on buses, except school buses, must have brakes or other mechanical means of holding still while it is raised or lowered on the wheelchair platform. Batteries must be spill resistant and securely attached to the wheelchair. Wheelchairs must not use flammable fuel. School bus wheelchairs regulations are on CCR Title 13 slash 1293. Loading and unloading. Loading and unloading. Bus drivers need to consider passengers' safety during loading and unloading. Always ensure your passengers are safely on the bus before closing the door and pulling away. Allow passengers enough time to sit down or brace themselves before you leave. Starting and stopping should be as smooth as possible to avoid rider injury. Animals. Transporting animals is prohibited, except for certified service, guide, or signal dogs used by physically challenged members, passengers. Standee line. Standee line. No rider may stand forward of the rear of the driver's seat. Buses designed to allow standing must have a two-inch line on the floor or some other means of showing riders where they cannot stand. This is called the standee line. All standing riders must stay behind it. At your destination. When arriving at your destination or intermediate stops, announce the location, the reason for stopping, the next departure time, the bus number. Remind riders to take carry-ons with them if they get off the bus. If the aisle is on a lower level than the seats, remind riders to step down. It is best to tell them before coming to a complete stop. Charter bus drivers should not allow riders on the bus until departure time. This will help prevent theft or vandalism of the bus. On the road. On the road and passenger supervision. Many charter and inner city carriers have passenger comfort and safety rules. Mention rules about smoking, drinking, or electronic devices at the start of the trip. Explaining the rules at the start will help to avoid trouble later on. While driving, scan the interior of the bus, as well as the road ahead, to the sides and to the rear. You may have to remind riders about rules or to keep arms and head inside the bus. At your stops. At stops, riders can stumble when getting on or off and when the bus starts or stops. Caution riders to watch their step when leaving the bus. Wait for them to sit down or brace themselves before starting. Starting and stopping should be as smooth as possible to avoid rider injury. Occasionally, you must have a 
drunk or disruptive driver. You must ensure the rider's safety as well as that of the others. Do not discharge such riders where it would be unsafe for them. It may be safer at the next scheduled stop or a well-lit area where there are other people. Many carriers have guidelines for handling disruptive riders. Common Accidents Most common bus accidents Bus accidents often happen at intersections. Use caution, even if a signal or stop sign controls other traffic. School and mass transit buses sometimes scrape off mirrors or hit passenger vehicles when pulling out from a bus stop. Remember the clearance your bus needs and watch for poles, tree limbs, and stops. Know the size of the gap your bus needs to accelerate and merge with traffic. Wait for the gap to open before leaving the stop. Never assume other drivers will break to give you room when your signal or start to pull out. Speed on curves. Speed on curves. Accidents occurring on curves that kill people and destroy buses revolt, result from excessive speed, often when rain or snow has made the road slippery. Every bank curve has a safe des design speed. In good weather, the posted speed is safe for cars, but it may be too fast for many buses. With good traction, the bus may even roll over. With poor traction, it may slide off the curve. Reduce your speed. If your bus leans toward the outside of a bank's curve, you are driving too fast. Use your mirrors. When you use your mirrors while driving on the road, check them quickly. Look back and forth regularly as part of a scan for potential hazards. Do not focus on the mirrors for too long. Otherwise, you will travel quite a distance without knowing what is happening ahead of you. Many buses have convex mirrors that show a wider area than flat mirrors. This is often helpful. Remember these mirrors make things seem smaller and farther away than they really are. Railroad Highway Crossing Stops Stop at railroad crossings. Stop your bus within 15 to 50 feet before railroad crossings. Listen and look in both directions for trains. You should open your forward door if it improves your ability to see or hear an approaching train. Before crossing after a train has passed, make sure there is not another train coming in the other direction or other tracks. If your bus has a manual transmission, never change gears while crossing the tracks. You do not have to stop, but most must slow down and carefully check for other vehicles at railroad tracks which run alongside and on the railroad within a business or residential district, at streetcar crossings, where a policeman is flagman is directing traffic, if a traffic signal is green, at crossings marked as exempt or abandoned. Drawbridges. Stop at drawbridges. Stop at drawbridges that do, have, do not have a signal light or traffic control attendant. Stop at least 50 feet before the draw of the bridge. Look to make sure the draw is completely closed before crossing. You do not need to stop. Bust must slow down and make sure it's safe when there is a traffic light showing green, the bridge has an attendant or traffic officer who controls traffic whenever the bridge opens. After Trip Vehicle Inspection Inspect your bus at the end of each shift. If you work for an interstate carrier, you must complete a written inspection report for each bus driven. The report must specify each bus and list any defects that would affect safety or result in a breakdown. If there are no defects, the report should say so. Riders sometimes damage safety-related parts such as handhold seats, emergency exits, and windows. If you report this damage at the end of a shift, mechanics can make repairs before the bus goes out again. Mass transit drivers should also make sure passenger signaling devices and other brake door interlocks work properly. Prohibited Practices Avoid fueling your bus with riders on board unless absolutely necessary. Never refuel at a closed building with riders on board. Do not talk with riders or engage in any other distracting activity while you're driving. Do not tow or push a disabled bus with riders aboard the vehicle unless getting off would be unsafe. Only tow or push the bus to the nearest safe spot to discharge passengers. Follow your employer's guidelines on towing or pushing disabled buses. The use of brake door interlocks. Urban mass transit coaches may have a brake and accelerator interlock system. The interlock applies the brakes and holds the throttle in the idle position when the rear door is open. The interlock releases when you close the rear door. Do not use this safety feature in place of a parking brake. Now it's time to test your knowledge. 
I'll ask you a few questions, and you should know the answer in your mind. If you don't, please re-listen to this video. Number one. Name some things to check in the interior of a bus during a vehicle inspection. Number two. What are some hazardous materials you can transport by bus? Number three. What are some hazardous materials you cannot transport by bus? Number four. What is a standee line? Number five. Does it matter where you make a disruptive passenger get off the bus? Number six. How far from a railroad crossing should you stop? Number seven. When must you stop before crossing a drawbridge? Number eight. Describe from memory the prohibited practices listed in this handbook. Number nine. The rear door of a transit bus has to be open to put on the parking brake. Is this true or false? Now remember, these questions may be on your DMV test. If you cannot answer them all, please re-listen to Section 4. We've completed Section 4. In our next video, we will continue on Section Number 5.